Okay, here's the 19th lecture. And for this lecture, we're focusing on integrating scalar functions over a manifold. So we were going to restrict ourselves on compact manifolds for simplicity. So the definition is, first, let M be a compact K-manifold in Rn of class CR, and we let F be a continuous function defined on the manifold and is a real value function. And we let C be the support of F. Then C is compact because it is a closed subset of a compact manifold, right? So it's compact. <laughs> now, we suppose there exists a coordinate patch such that, such that it contains the, co uh, contains the support. <laughs> Okay, so if there's a single coordinate patch that contains the support, then we know that this set is compact because this function is continuous. Now, we make the open set U smaller such that U is bounded, okay? So we then define the integral of F over M. We define it by this equation. So the integral of F over the manifold is defined to be this function. So f of alpha times the volume and the whole function integrated over the interior of u. Well, the interior of u. So if u, the coordinate patch, the domain, is open in R, then the interior u is just equal to u. If it's open in hk, then we know that u is equal to some set open in rk intersecting with hk, right? Then the interior of u, which is the interior of u prime intersecting with the interior of hk, which is this. Well, here's the proof of this property. So for this direction, this is the subset of this. By definition, it's subset of this. <laughs> so this is the open subset of a, which means that we have this. And similarly, we have this. And for this direction, we know this subset of this, right? Because this subset of A to the subset of B. So there are the subset of A intersecting with B. Then it's an open subset. So by definition, we have this. Okay. Now the interior of U is equal to U prime intersecting with this set. While is this set is just equal to HK intersecting with hk plus right because this is the subset of this well the pro the purpose of doing this operation is that we see this right this is just equal to u right <laughs> then is equal to this okay okay but here's a note for this definition the function the integrand function here, this function, f, is continuous on u, and it vanishes outside a compact set here, right? So f is a co continuous bounded function, because f is bounded, the domain is compact, so the image set is also compact, which is bounded. Well, f is a bounded continuous function, and now we discuss different cases. If u is open at rk, right, then for x, belongs to the boundary, we have that x0 is not in this set. Because if x is in this set, then x is in u, right? Because we make u contains this. While this means that x is in u and the boundary. But this is a contradiction because u is an open set. If you're on a boundary, then every neighborhood does not contain in u. Right? So it's a contradiction. So x not cannot be on this set. Which means that the function f vanish near x not. For any x not on the boundary, because it is not in the support, right? So there exists a neighborhood in which f vanishes identically on the neighborhood, intersecting with the domain. Well, x0 is not on the domain, right? 
So we can't say that f vanishes at x0, but we can say that f vanishes near this. Then, by theorem 13.5. 13.5 is somewhere here. We have a... Okay, shut up. We have a bounded continuous function, and E is a set of points on boundary of the domain for which this condition fails to hold. But f vanishes near x0, and f is continuous. So this condition cannot fail, right? Because f is continuous and vanishes near this point. So which means that the set E, so the points x0 for which the condition fails to hold. Or well, in our case, the set E is empty set because, right, we have all of them satisfied the given condition. Well, then the integral of f over u exists. Now, if u is open in hk, things get a bit more complicated. Now, for x not be in the boundary, but not on the boundary of this manifold, so not on this set, then we have that x is not in this set. Why? Because if x is in this set, which means that x is in this set, right? <laughs> now, if x, we assume that is in the set, then we know that is in u, right? Then x is in this set. Well, this intersect with this, Remember what is this set? This set is the interior of u, right? <laughs> interior of u intersecting the boundary of u, but u is open in hk. Well, no matter what, we have this is always the empty set, right? <laughs> then we have some element belongs to the empty set, which is a contradiction. The contradiction starts from we assuming x is in this set. So we have that this which means that f vanished near x naught again so the condition this so this possibly fails if x is on the boundary but on this set but this set has measure zero and rk why because this set has a measure zero and rk and this is a subset of it so yeah <laughs> Well, the reason why this had measure zero rk, uh, for example, we have the x-axis has measure zero and r2. We can cover it by by rectangles. Well, the the length gets longer and the height gets smaller. <laughs> so no matter what, by theorem thirteen point five again, thanks to this, this theorem no that not this integral exists. So in either case, they all exist, while which means that the interior of this exists, <laughs> which is by 13.6, right? Bound to continuous function, blah, blah, blah. Integral over S, that's integral over A. Okay. <laughs> all right. So here we are chilling. Now here I'll introduce a lemma. This lemma says that, well, note that in our definition, the support is covered by a single coordinate patch. So the lemma says that if the support of F can be covered by a single coordinate patch, which is, which is exactly this case, right, which is exactly this case, then the integral is well-defined, independent of the choice of coordinate patch. So if you have another coordinate patch covers the com uh the the compact support you're again like the integral are the same <laughs> so here's lemma 25.1 <laughs> we let so we let alpha be a corner patch containing the su support and we let w open and u such that this the image contains the support 
So, so we're given this. Our claim is that these two integral, so these two are equal to each other. And, and this is our claim. So to verify this, in ordinary sense, they're all, they're all bounded, right? Because we assume u to be bounded. <laughs> well, in ordinary sense, they are equal by lemma 16.4. Well, 16.4 is that if a function vanishes outside a compact set and you're defined on an open set, then the integral on the compact set is equal. Like the integral on a compact set is equal to the integral on the open set, <laughs> right? So here, they're equal no matter what because we have this okay now f the function f vanishes outside c right so we have that this is equal this is equal to this so does the interior when, when we take the interior of u now with so, we have verified this claim. <laughs> now, with the use of this claim, we're going to prove our theorem. So with this result, we first, we give in two coordinate patches, right? Such that all their support, their image set contains the support. <laughs> so what we really want to show is that what the theorem, what the lemma says that these two integrals are equal. Right? This is what the lemma says. It's independent of the choice of the coordinate patch. Okay. Now, to prove this, will a W be the intersection of them? And they contain some portent. And we let each WI be the inverse image on this W for each alpha I. And they're open in UI. So if each wi is open in ui right we use this now by, by our claim it's sufficient to show that the equality holds with the ui replaced by wi so with w0 equal to w1 if we show that is true then by this right we are done so we just want to show that it's replaced by wi here we use the theorem of 22.1. 22.1, it says that, okay, so first we have to realize that a manifold is locally a parametrized manifold. <laughs> so we let G be a different morphism, open says, blah, blah, blah. So read this theorem, okay? Now, as this function is a different morphism by theorem 24.1, this is a diffeomorphism, morphism. And then we use theorem 22.1. And then we are done. <laughs> okay. Right. Now, we're moving on to the next one. So we want to define the integral of f over the manifold in general. <laughs> we're going to use a partition of unity on a manifold. A partition of unity on a manifold. So... The lemma says that let M be a K-manifold, then we're given a covering by coordinate patches. So an open covering of M. But each open set is an image set of a coordinate patch. <laughs> then there exists a finite collection of functions such that it satisfied a, like a partition of unity sense par property, <laughs> right? This one, they're also all non-negative, and they add up to 1 for x equal to m. Here's the finite collection. The partition of unity gives a countable collection, right? But this is a finite collection. And when we turn countable to finite, we use the fact that m is a compact k-manifold. <laughs> and the second condition seems really scary, but what it says that the, each support is compact, of course, because we're having partition of unity, right? And 
there's a coordinate patch such that the support intersecting M is NVI. Well, we're gonna prove this really quick. <laughs> so first, let us construct, let us get the countable collections first. So for each coordinate patch, right, in the collection, we choose AV open and RN such that AV intersecting M is equal to V because we know that V is open and M, right? V is open and M. We choose an AV. We let A be the collection, be the union of all of them, and then we do partition beauty on A. And we're given a sequence of functions that satisfies seven properties. <laughs> we have... I think somewhere here, right? There are the seven properties of a partition of unity. Well, <laughs> we know that first for each x and m, it's just local finiteness, right? There exists a neighborhood of x such that finitely a phi i does not vanish on the neighborhood by local finiteness. Then m can be covered by finitely of the ui's because m is compact, right? And then we take the union of all the finite functions. So we just count all of them over all the finite the finite of them. Each union, no, sorry. Each neighborhood has a finite collection of functions. And then we have a finite collection of unions. So we take all of the phi i's. Then say we have one, one to L, we have L of them. Then those function they do not vanish on the manifold right okay so now we have a partition of unity and the first condition says that it should be non-negative of course is a tr trivial one and the third one is also trivial but the second one let me just give a bit verification so each support is in some avi right this is by the seventh property. The seventh property says for each i, the set S i is contained in an element of A. Right? A is a collection of open sets. Right? So by trans we just translate it, the language, we translate the language. In our case, it means that each of the support phi i is in some A V i. We just name it A V i, right? It's a subset. It's a subset of some A V i. Then we intersect it with M, right? Just I or J, it doesn't matter. I, V, I, <laughs> right? Then this is exactly what we want, right? This is exactly what we want. <laughs> All right, okay, so with this lemma, we can define our integral over a manifold. So first, I don't, I don't need this anymore. Okay. <laughs> so we let N be a compact K-manifold of class CR. Then we let F be a continuous function divide a manifold and a partition unity on M. And we define the integral of F over the manifold to be look like this and is equal to this sum of the integral. And we define the volume of the integral by this. Okay. <laughs> now note, here's a note. If the support lies in a single coordinate patch, then this definition agrees with the preceding one. Okay? Well, here is the verification. So we just let A denote the interior of U. Now, <laughs> this is the integral, right? By definition, there's an integral. Now this is equal to this by our definition because we define as integrating over interior of U, right? <laughs> okay, now, we by linearity, right? We can put this in. We switch the summation and the integral sign. And then this is just equal to this because this is equal to one. It's a partition of unity, the third property. And 
this is just equal to this by the definition, right? By the definition. Okay. And also we have another property set. This definition is independent of partition unity. So if we let this be another partition unity, because the support of this function lies in a single coordinate patch, right? Because the support of this, the support of this function lies in a single coordinate patch, right? Support of this on M, right? Lies in a single coordinate patch. And this, well, is a subset of this. Uh, uh, this set is a subset of this set, right? Because F could, if F vanish, if F vanishes where Psi vanish, it won't change anything. But if F could vanish at some place where Psi J does not vanish, then it will make the support smaller, right? Well, then by two of the last number, right? We can by two of the last number. I just say that. Then we can replace F by this. In the computation we made here, in the computation we made here, we should replace f by psi at j, then we get this is equal to this, and then we sum over j. Well, this we're just summing, we're just summing this, we just sum over j, right? Well, this is just gonna be equal to this thing sum over j. <laughs> well, by symmetry of the summation, right? We can switch these two sum and also equals to this because each side is a partition of unity so these two are equal well which means that is independent of the partition of unity right you choose two different of them and their integral turns out to be equal to each other well here's a theorem that says that it's linearity so this is that is this integral af plus bg is equal to a of this plus b of this okay okay let me just verify this is equal to this by definition <laughs> and this we can split we can we can just split this out right and then <laughs> we use our definition and the linearity right and it's going to be equal to this function of alpha times v d alpha, right? Well, this function of alpha, and then we put the summation sign inside. So it's going to be look like this. And this, we can split them by linearity. And we slip them, and then we put it inside inside, and we put the scalar outside. And we have this. Now, we observe this one, which is precisely equal to this one. And then we observe this one, which is exactly equal to this one by the definition. And then we are done. So here's another definition. Well, a set is measure zero and a manifold, which means that it is a countable coordinate patch such that the image covers D and the inverse image on D with each coordinate patch is measure zero and RK. Okay, and this concludes this section of the study of manifold.